أيامكم سعيدة أيامكم سعيدة 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 يا لعيدكم عقيدة 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 Assalamu alaikum everyone, and welcome to another event with Um Ayman Books. That's today called Um Ayman Cooks. Thank you for joining us. It's good to see you all happy and smiling. This is a very happy day, and we have decorated the room and made yummy muffins. We have two celebrations today, not just one. Do you know what they are? Yes, of course you do. The pack that you've received tells you everything. It's full of all sorts of fun activities to teach you about today's two happy occasions. The birth of our Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and also the birth of Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq They both have their birthday on the same day, 17th Rabi' al-Awwal. Today we're going to have a fun episode with stories, a very exciting baking session too. The right ingredients. This poem is inspired by my late grandmother, Rosemary al attar Being a Muslim is like making a cake. Many ingredients go into the make. Oil and eggs and lots of flour. Baking powder has an unseen power. Frosting, sprinkles, fruit and spice make a cake taste very nice. Ingredients are mixed and put to bake to come out later a golden cake. Miss out an ingredient by being too hasty and the cake won't be successful, not very tasty. Different ingredients to make a Muslim we need, if to be good we aim to succeed. Pilgrimage, fasting, devotion to prayer, giving to charity and Allah's unity declare. Kind to others of neighbors the best, generous yet humble and modestly dressed. These are the ingredients that good Muslims make, mixed well together just like a cake. Who's ready? Let's get started. Look who wants to join me today. Feel the elephant. Assalamu alaikum, Feel. It's nice to see you. Can you guess why he's joining us today? Let's find out why. A long time ago, people didn't have calendars like we do today. So there wasn't a certain year. They'd name it according to something big or important that had happened that year. So for example, if there was a flood, they'd call it the year of the flood. If, for example, there was a virus like this year, they'd call it the year of the virus. And this is where feel comes in. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad was born in the year of the elephant. Or in Arabic, it's called Am al fil There's a whole story in the Quran called Surat al fil Do you know that surah? I'm sure you do. And this is the story of Surat al-Fil. Abraha was the king of Yemen. He built a church and wanted people to come to his church for Hajj rather than do Hajj in Mecca. As much as he tried, people would not leave the Holy Kaaba. So he decided he would destroy it. He marched with an army of elephants and reached Mecca. The elephants, like Fil here, they were really good animals and they refused to destroy the Holy Kaaba. They tried and tried, but the elephants refused to move. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to protect the Holy Kaaba and destroy Abraha and his evil army. He sent swarms of birds holding stones. The birds flew over the army and dropped the stones down. The evil Abraha and his army were killed and the Kaaba was protected. This was an important incident that year, so the year was named the Year of the Elephant. Thank you, Fiel. This is the year that our beloved Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was born. So what else do we know about the Prophet? Do you know anything, Fiel? I'm sure you do. So his mother was Lady Amina, a pious lady, and his father was Abdullah, the son of Abd al-Muttalib, who was from the family of the protectors of the Holy Kaaba. His father died before he was born, and then his mother, Lady Amina, died too when he was just a child. 
Our Prophet Muhammad grew up an orphan with his grandfather Abdul Muttalib first looking after him and then his uncle Abu Talib. The Prophet was known for his akhlaq or high morals and from a young age, even before he became a Prophet, he was known to be al-sadiq al-amin, the truthful one and the trustworthy one. Do you know the story of when the Kaaba needed rebuilding? There were floods in Mecca and the Kaaba needed to be restored. So the different tribes built it together. And when it was time to put the black stone Al-Hajar Al-Aswad in its place, they argued. Every tribe wanted that honor for themselves. So they agreed that the first person who walks in from the gates the next day would decide. And guess who it was? Yes, it was the Holy Prophet Muhammad And They were all so happy. It's because he is a Sadiq al-Amin, they said. The Prophet brought a piece of cloth and placed the black stone on it. He then asked each tribe to pick up a corner of that cloth. In this way, they all joined in moving. The Prophet himself then put it in its place. The black stone is still there in Mecca, on one of the corners of the Holy Kaaba. So where do we go if we want to visit the Prophet? Does anyone know? Do you know? Yes, we go to al Madinah al-Munawara. There, the Prophet has a mosque with a green dome above it. We read ziyaras there and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet was the final of Allah's Prophets and he came with very high standards of akhlaq and morals. We said he was known to be, a, what was it? Yes, al-sadiq al-amin. But that's not all. He was also generous, kind and gentle. He treated everyone equally and was very polite and honourable. He was humble and pious too, the best of akhlaq for all of us to follow. Let's think, have you been kind recently, maybe to your younger brother or your sister or to your grandparents? Have you been generous? Can you think of that time? Maybe you shared your biscuit with a brother or a friend, or maybe you gave the bigger ice cream happily to your sister. These are acts Allah, the Prophet and the Ahlul Bayt would love and appreciate. And now it's craft time. Let's start with the chef's hat. Decorate the chef's hat with the stickers provided. Put them all over the place. Let an adult help you cut around the shape, or if you can, do it yourself, but be very careful. Glue the ends or use sticky tape to attach the band to the chef's hat. And there you have it, your very own chef's hats. Make sure you wear them while you're baking today.
Welcome back. Now we're going to be talking about Imam Jafar al-Sadiq. And we know that Imam al-Sadiq shares his birthday with the Prophet. He is also born on 17th Rabi'ah al-Awwal. Two birthdays in one. How exciting. He is our sixth Imam. Can you name the Imams before him? Let's go through them together, shall we? Imam Ali, Imam Hassan, Imam Hussain, Imam Sajjad, Imam Al-Baqir, and Imam Jafar al-Sadiq. Well done. It's very important to learn the names of our Imams in order. Imam Jafar al-Sadiq was born in al Madinah al-Munawwara, and he died there too. We as Muslims are called Jafariyah. That means we are blessed to know and follow Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq. Does that mean he is better than the other Imams? No, of course not. The difference is at the time that he lived, he had more freedom than the other Imams to spread the teachings of the Ahlul Bayt salam about Islam and sciences and logic. He was a great teacher in many subjects. He taught very famous people. We are proud to be his followers and love learning and reading and gaining knowledge, many different subjects, to be the best we can be in whatever we choose. Let's go through a story from Imam Sadiq's life. At that time, there were a lot of people who didn't believe in God. They needed proof and evidence. So one day, a man came and asked the Imam, if you say your God can do miraculous things, then can he put the world inside an egg without making the world smaller or the egg bigger? Imam Sadiq, of course, knew the answer immediately, but wanted the man himself to experience it. So he said, go to the roof of this house, have a look around, and then come back down. The man went to the roof, had a look, and came back down again. Imam Jafar al-Sadiq asked him, What did you see up there? The man answered, I saw trees and mountains and houses and people and even animals. The Imam smiled. He said, That's the answer to your question. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants, he can fit all all of those things in your eyes so that you can see. He didn't make the mountains smaller or the trees shorter. Yet with your eyes that are no bigger than an egg, all of those things fit in. What an amazing, clever answer from our beloved Imam. If we want to go for ziyara of Imam Jafar Sadiq, do you know where we go? We go to Jannat al baghiyah in al Madinah al Munawwara. He is one of the four Imams buried there, close to the Prophet Muhammad It is very important that if we call ourselves Jafariya, we honour that name. We are always truthful. We always pray on time and not delay our prayers. We show the best of manners to our family, neighbours and friends. We smile and help everyone who needs help. We respect elders and teachers especially. In this way, we honour our Imam Jafar Sadiq alayhi salam and make him proud of us.
forget kids about our worldwide competition. All you need to do is read the questions carefully, then stamp over or highlight the number of the correct answer. Once you have finished, let an elder take a picture of the sheet and send it on Instagram to at um Books. Three lucky winners will be chosen. Good luck! You've done so well today. We're very proud of all your amazing work. Well done. Here's a special certificate just for you to be proud of. In front of me are these cute elephant money boxes to give away to two of you lucky children. Just leave a comment below, we will choose two winners randomly and we will announce them on our Instagram page at um Books. Make sure you follow us. Thank you all for joining our celebrations for today. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Thank you Phil for joining us. Enjoy your cupcake and we hope to see you again soon. Ma salama.